Sometimes here at The Backdrop, we like to dig deep on a big new release. However, sometimes it's also just good to shout out a film or show that we think could do with some more attention. So, this week, we're going to talk about Shogun, which is broadcasting on FX in the States and streaming on Disney Plus internationally. It's been a pretty good year for film and television, and it's only March. In particular, it's been a good showing for the old-fashioned miniseries, and Shogun is a great example of that. So, we're going to talk a little bit about what Shogun is, why it's so great, and then we're going to zero in on one aspect of the show that really demonstrates what a finely honed production this is. We also understand that maybe you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, or maybe you're just waiting for it to finish up before you binge it, so we're going to talk about those first two things without spoilers. Then when we get to the third section of the video, I'll give you a little heads up, and if you want to remain completely unspoiled, you can bookmark it and come back later. But look, for now, before we begin, there's only one thing you need to know. Shogun? More like... Show good. Hey, wait, we're... Shogun is a sweeping adaptation of James Clavell's turtle-cracking 1975 novel of the same name. That novel was previously adapted for television as a nine-hour television maxi-series that broadcast on NBC in September 1980. This adaptation was part of a larger wave of high-profile miniseries during the era, such as Roots, V, Rich Man, Poor Man, North and South. Broadcasting in the middle of an actor's strike, Shogun was a massive hit. It was the second most successful miniseries of all time in American television, behind only Roots. It also pushed boundaries, featuring graphic violence and nudity that was rare for American broadcast television at the time, and which is still, frankly, impossible for us to show on YouTube. It also featured what Washington Post television critic Tom Shale speculated was the first graphic depiction of public urination on mainstream American television. From a distance, it's hard to understand how much of a phenomenon both the novel and the miniseries were. By 1990, the book had sold 15 million copies worldwide. It was a topic of dinner table conversations and newspaper think pieces. I don't even live in America, and every person over the age of 50 that I've talked to remembers Shogun as a cultural touchstone. Indeed, it was arguably an early example of that wave of 1980s and 1990s American pop culture which was obsessed with, and probably a little terrified of, Japan. In recent years, even more than rivals like HBO and Netflix, FX and its subsidiary FX on Hulu has reinvented itself as the home of the prestige miniseries and anthology show. The network has been circling an adaptation of Shogun for several years at this point, and the results are genuinely striking. Shogun is a broadly fictionalized account of crucial events in the history of feudal Japan. It follows the arrival of British sailor John Blackthorne into Japan at a point where the nation is still closely guarded. Blackthorne seeks to subvert the relationship between the Japanese government and the Portuguese church and traders who seek to exploit the land and its people. Blackthorne unwittingly finds himself thrown into a succession crisis. Following the death of leader Tycho, it was agreed that a council of regents would rule in his stead until his son came of age. However, that council is aligned against Lord Yoshi Taranaga. Taranaga cannot vanquish his opponents in open warfare, and so finds himself embroiled in a game of subterfuge and wits in which he must outmaneuver his opponents using every piece he has at his disposal, including our recently recovered British seamen. The clear point of comparison for Shogun is obviously Game of Thrones. This is another medieval political epic, a show about how diplomacy and statecraft are often warfare conducted by other means. It's a show about power in its myriad forms, about who wields it and how they use it. Drawing from the source material, it depicts a rich world populated with complex and compelling characters played by a game cast. The show is a tour de force for star Hiroki Sanada as Toranaga. Sanada actually played Togagawa Iyasu, the historical basis for Toranaga, in a 1989 Japanese miniseries. Sanada is an actor who's always thrived playing characters with vivid interiority, and his performance anchors the show. Other standouts include Anna Sawei, who recently made a good impression on Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Also, Cosmo Jarvis is having a pretty good time playing Tom Hardy doing a Richard Burton impression. This is what beckoned me. The horizon. More than the deep. The freedom, more than the horizon. The production is absolutely top-notch. The set and costume design is detailed and rich. The show shot on location in beautiful British Columbia, capturing an atmospheric wilderness that will be familiar to any fan of classic American television. The score by Atticus Ross, Leopold Ross, and Nick Chuba is layered and nuanced, without ever veering into cliché. 
The writing is robust, with the production team demonstrating a clear understanding of episodic structure that can't always be assumed in the age of modern television. It helps the adaptation shifts focus away from Blackthorn himself, and in doing so downplays the overly familiar Stranger in a Strange Land approach that would exoticize these characters in this world. Shogun is truly immersive, it brings a new perspective to an old story. It's been a good few months for television, but even by those standards, Shogun is a cut above. So now we're going to talk specifically about how the show does what it does. We're going to focus on one key aspect of the production and how that relates to the themes and the storytelling in the show. That will involve talking about the show in a little bit of depth. We're not going to spoil any big twists or give away any game-changing reveals. But if you want to remain completely spoiler-free, consider this your cue to hit pause, bookmark the video, and come back whenever you're ready. However, if you want to get a little more detail on the show, let's jump right on in. So, one of the big ways that Shogun immerses its audience in this world is through the use of language. It's very clever. The show basically adheres to the template employed by similar works like Martin Scorsese's Silence, in which the European characters, whether Spanish, Portuguese, or British, all speak English while the indigenous characters speak in subtitled Japanese. This is not an approach that an American television show could have taken even 20 years ago. The original Shogun, for example, has the characters speak primarily in English. However, contrary to longly held beliefs in the entertainment industry, recent years have shown that American audiences are increasingly comfortable with subtitles. Three of the last five Best Picture winners have been heavily subtitled. Three of this year's Best Picture nominees involve extended dialogue sequences in languages other than English. However, there has been some pushback to this. On the podcast The Town, while discussing the potential use of artificial intelligence for translation, dubbing, and lip syncing, host and former Hollywood reporter editor Matt Baloney singled out Shogun as a prime candidate for this process. You know, I've been watching Shogun on Hulu, and it's a great show, but it's mostly in Japanese, and it would be nice, not saying I would do this, but it would be nice to have an option to watch it in all English, and that the mouths of the characters would not be off as they are when you watch a typical show that is dubbed. While Baloney somewhat hedges his comments, this gets at the sense in which people don't really think about the use of language as an artistic choice in works like this, a tool to communicate ideas and themes. There's a tendency to think of dialogue as mere content, exposition, plot, separate from the way in which it is delivered to the audience. In reality, the production team thought very carefully about how the characters would deliver their lines, and those choices inform character, plot, and theme. It's worth breaking down how exactly this worked. The writers would write the dialogue in English, then translators would transpose it into Japanese, then historical experts would rework that dialogue to make it more period appropriate. In many cases, the end result was dialogue that was much more evocative and poetic. Here's co-creator Rachel Kondo talking about one key example from late in the show's first episode. Well, one instance that comes to mind is at the end of episode one, when Tornaga is discussing with Marika what is about to happen. And they get to this point in the conversation where he says to her, I need to know, is this going to conflict with your faith? And she says to him, and the, what was in the script was, she says to Tornaga, it would be a problem if I was only one thing. Mm -hmm. And it went to the Japanese and how that was performed by the great Anna Sawai was that it came back, I have more than one heart. And I thought that that was a beautiful, much more spiritually accurate way to put it. And so we stuck with it. Quick note here. The title of the first episode of the show is Anjan. This translates as pilot, an obvious reference to Blackthorn, who is a pilot of a ship. However, it's also a clever bit of wordplay layered through translation given that the English word pilot has traditionally been used for the first episode of a television series. As somebody who loves terrible puns, game recognize game. Even setting aside the level of craft involved, the use of language is essential to the show's storytelling. Key to Shogun is the idea that individuals are fundamentally unknowable to one another, and that this is necessary to survive in such a hostile environment, as a character explains to Blackthorn towards the end of the first episode. There's a saying out here that every man has three hearts. One in his mouth for the world to know. Another in his chest, just for his friends. And a secret heart buried deep where no one can find it. That is a heart a man must keep hidden if he wants to survive. 
This idea is reflected in various ways throughout the show, for example the visual language. It's notable that early episodes tend to frame Toronaga from behind in order to make him inscrutable to the audience. Close-ups are shot with wide-angle lenses, which tend to distort the edge of the frame, creating a sense that the world outside the character is strange or uncanny. It's also reflected in the way that the show uses language. After all, words can express so much more than just their literal meaning, and much is lost through the art of interpretation and translation. From the show's opening episode, Blackthorn understands that his words can be manipulated and bent to serve the motives of the translator. They don't know about us, do they? You've told them Portugal's the only flag in Europe. Which means I am the first thing you sailor to reach your Catholic treasury. And you have no intention of translating my words. Shogun repeatedly uses the art of translation to demonstrate how language can be used to conceal or communicate intent. An idea can be modified or distorted as it works its way through modes of expression. Sometimes those differences are subtle. He asks what you seek here. To vanquish our common enemies. Sometimes they're more profound. Tell this milk dribbling fucks me, I'm ready to go. However, they always communicate a gulf between what is being said and what is being understood. Ironically, the show suggests that language is as much a barrier to comprehension as it is a vehicle to it. In some cases, it's easier for characters to understand each other while they're speaking different languages. This theme about the limits of communication is a recurring preoccupation in modern pop culture. For example, Shogun is part of a recent wave of feudalistic pop culture, movies and TV shows about fragmented and fractured societies, which suggests that the tendency of societies is to break down into competing interests, often with competing narratives, objectives, and even ways of understanding the world. In Ridley Scott's Last Jewel, for example, the audience is presented with three different accounts of the same event, underscoring the idea that in such a society, everybody is entitled to their version of the truth. Denis Villeneuve's recent adaptation of Dune employs a similar approach to language, suggesting that many of the great houses speak their own languages and have their own processes. In Shogun, there is no monoculture. The groups and alliances within the show often break down into smaller and smaller subsets. The Council of Regents left in stewardship of Japan is not a united or cohesive body. Even the Europeans are not a monolithic entity, dividing into Spaniards and Portuguese, Catholics and Protestants, and the characters who straddle various divisions. Given all these different groups with all these different objectives, it's a miracle that any human being can communicate at all. This is another larger trend in contemporary pop culture, stories about worldviews so divergent that it's impossible for characters to understand one another on even the most basic of levels. Who knows what's going on in that felt three-pound brain of his? Not you! You don't know him. That's right, neither do you. Only Will Downing truly knows Will Downing. Recently, for example, Netflix premiered Three Body Problem, a show about an alien invasion by creatures that defy any attempt at human comprehension. We don't know what they are. And maybe we can't know what they are. And look, it's not hard to figure out why these stories have resonated over the past couple of years. Our own society has fractured and fragmented. We've lost a sense of a shared reality. It can often seem like we aren't even speaking the same language as one another. Shogun takes this very existential idea and literally bakes it into the language of the show, using subtitles and Japanese dialogue as a way to communicate how some experiences and perspectives are so far apart as to render communication next to impossible. In such a world, can anyone ever truly know or be known to anyone else? It's a big thematic idea, and Shogun somehow finds a way to communicate it perfectly. I've been Darren Mooney, and this was The Backdrop.